we continue our discussion on radiation of heat and the next law we are going to look at is what is known as Newton's law of cooling. So uh, let us assume that we have an object, let us say an irregular shaped object at some temperature. Let us say the temperature of this object is theta 1 at a particular time and this is radiating heat out to the surroundings and let us say the surroundings which is say let us say air uh, it has temperature theta 0 say for example so this is theta 1 and this is theta 2 theta 0 and quite obviously the air temperature is lesser than this so this object radiates heat to the atmosphere to the air and it loses heat and, uh, what Newton's law of cooling talks about is about the rate of loss of heat it talks about the rate of loss of heat. How fast does this object lose heat? That depends upon the temperature difference. The temperature difference between the object and the atmosphere, in this case the air. Right? And the statement of Newton's law is something like this. It says that when a hot body is cooled in air, the rate of loss of heat from the hot body is proportional to the difference in temperature between the body and its surroundings. So what it says is that how fast this object will lose heat depends upon the temperature difference between the object and the surroundings. As more the difference between theta 1 and theta 0, the rate of heat loss will be faster. Now the important thing uh, to consider over here is that the moment it loses heat because of this temperature difference, the temperature of the object drops and when, it, when that drops, the temperature difference between these also decreases. And therefore, what would happen is rate of loss of heat would decrease. So that's the important point over here. And we'll try to look at it from, we'll get an equation for Newton's law of cooling and then maybe try out a numerical question on that. Okay, so coming back, uh, rate of loss of heat is proportional to the temperature difference. So this is proportional to temperature difference. So let us say the initial temperature of the object is theta 1 and the temperature drops to theta 2 in time t seconds and the temperature of the surroundings is let us say theta 0. And if the mass of the object is S is m and let us say the specific heat specific heat capacity of the object is say for example C the rate of heat loss will be mc into theta 1 minus theta 2. This is the temperature drop theta 1 to theta 2, mc theta 1. This will give me the total heat lost by the object. And the rate of heat loss would be divided by the time t, the time in which this temperature change occurs. And by Newton's law of cooling, this is proportional to temperature difference between the object, between the temperature difference between the object and the surroundings. So temperature of the object, uh, I am intentionally putting a blank over here minus theta 0 temperature of the object minus surroundings so this difference now what will be the temperature of the object as you can see the temperature of the object is not constant initially it was theta 1 and finally it has become theta 2 so what should I take here as the temperature of the object what we do is we take the average of the temperature so what I do is I write over here theta 1 plus theta 2 upon 2 minus theta 0 because the temp since the temperature of the object is changing, we cannot take one value of temperature. Therefore, what we do is we take the average value of temperature, which is theta 1 plus theta 2 upon 2 minus theta 0. So this is the uh, equation for Newton's law of motion. And I can write this over here as mc theta 1 minus theta 2 upon t is equal to some constant k into theta 1 plus theta 2 upon 2 minus theta 0. Okay, uh, one more thing about Newton's law of cooling is that the law is applicable when the temperature difference is not too large. If the temperature difference is very very high, then the rate of heat, uh, rate of heat loss doesn't follow Newton's law of cooling. So if the object is at a very very high temperature as compared to there, um, Newton's law of cooling is not applicable. So I hope you've got a, got a hang of what Newton's law of cooling about is and uh, we'll do a numerical question on this so that you are able to understand this better. And here is the numerical question that I'm going to attempt in this video. 
Let us say there is a body which is cools in 7 minutes from 60 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. What will be its temperature after the next 7 minutes? The temperature of the surrounding is 10 degrees Celsius. Assume Newton's law of cooling holds goods throughout the process. Right, so we have a situation like this. Right, maybe I'll use this space over here. So the first 7 minutes and the last 7 minutes. In the first minute, the body cools from 60 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. So theta 1 is 60 degrees Celsius, theta 2 is um, 40 degrees Celsius. In this case, theta 1 would be 40 degrees Celsius because it would have reached 40 degrees Celsius. And what will be the temperature after the next thing? So theta 2 is equal to, we have to find out which is question mark, so we will call it theta. And I am putting question mark because we have to find out this theta. What else is given? Theta 0 is given to us as 10 degrees Celsius. And which would be same for both, this, both the cases. So if I use Newton's law of cooling over here, for the first 7 minutes I would get m into c. Theta 1 minus theta 2 is equal to 60 minus 40 divided by time t is 7 minutes. So 7 into 60 seconds. This time I have to take in seconds is equal to some constant k. Theta 1 plus theta 2 upon 2. Theta 1 plus theta 2. 60 plus 40 divided by 2. That would give me 50. 50 minus 10. And therefore I would get mc into 20 upon 420 is equal to. This is 40k. And therefore I can get the mc upon k as 40 into 420 upon 20, 21, 22, 840. So MC upon K is 840. Right. So this is, I have obtained the value of MC upon K which I will use over here. Now from this equation, MCK, MC by K rather is equal to, MC by K would be equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 divided by 2 minus theta 0 into t upon theta 1 minus theta 2. Therefore, mck which we have already obtained is 840 is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 upon 2. Theta 1 in this case is 40, then this is theta. So I will get 40 plus theta by 2 minus theta 0 is 10 into 420 upon theta 1 minus theta 2. Theta 1 is 40 theta 2 is theta. So this would give me 40 minus theta. This is 420, 840. So I will get 2 over here. So I can write down 2 is equal to 40 plus theta upon 2 minus 10 into 1 upon 40 minus theta. And now I will solve this equation. So I will get over here 2 into 40 minus theta is equal to 40 plus theta upon 2 minus 10. So 80 minus 2 theta is equal to 40 plus theta minus 20 upon 2. So 160 minus 4 theta is equal to 40 plus theta minus 20. And what will what will I get? 4 theta I can bring over here. So here I will have 5 theta and here I will have 160 minus 40 is 120. 120 minus uh, 40 minus 20. So 120 plus 140 and therefore theta will be 140 upon 5 that is 28 degrees Celsius. So I get theta as 28 degrees Celsius. So I just did this uh, numerical question so that you are able to understand how to apply uh, Newton's law of cooling. So just to summarize what we have done, Newton's law of cooling is given by this equation and it says the loss rate of heat loss. This is the heat loss, this is the rate of heat loss because you have did it by time is equal to or is proportional to, proportional to the temperature difference between the object and the atmosphere. This is the temperature of the surroundings of the atmosphere and this is the average temperature of the object. Thank you.